Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And welcome to our eighth webinar. You can see behind me, the sign says, uh, the Rack Biggest Weight Losers Challenge. And this is our OBFIT webinar series. This is our eighth webinar. The earlier one was on yoga and prior to that, uh, it was uh, on nutrition and exercise and so on and so forth. A couple of years back, I was at the conference, the World Conference on Lifestyle Medicine in Geneva, and one of the learned speakers spoke about an exciting new subject, which he referred to as the gut microbiome. And the speaker mentioned that this is bacteria in the gut and that there was more than a hundred trillion such bacteria in the gut. As a matter of fact, there was more bacteria in the gut and in the digestive tract of the human body than the total cells that comprised the human body systems. Another indicator is that there is more microbiomes or gut bacteria than there are stars in the sky. And one would imagine that what do we do with this gut bacteria? Is it important to us? And it is. Apparently it detoxes the entire human body and keeps us well, but I don't know enough on the subject. And just the other day, I was scoring the net to try and see if I could get any information on gut microbiome. And there, I chanced upon the name Kiru Kishore Kumar, who was in fact, who had recently given a talk on gut microbiomes. And therefore I thought that if Kiru lives in Dubai, which is next door to Russell Khaimah, then we must get in touch with Kiru. And we did. You can see on your screen, we have a brief profile of Mrs. Kiru Kishok Kumar, who is a graduate from the UK as well as the United States, from the UK, uh, uh, which is Aberdeen and Lester, she has done her studies in pharmacology and an MBA. And more precisely to our program, she has done her studies in integrative nutrition from the United States. Now her professional experience integrates her academia and She's in the area of biomedical research and also managing her own business. Now, as, a new, as an integrative nutrition health coach, she uses science-based tools and advises her clients on physical and mental health, nutrition, wellness, relationship management, and transforms the lives of her clients. In her health coaching, she teaches unique fasting programs, gut repair, diet, and helps clients to lose weight if that is necessary. And in our program, in our group, this is so important. She does this globally. Singapore, Australia, India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, USA, and Japan are some of the countries that Kiru has clients in. And by talking to us on this program, Kiru would happily expand her field to several other countries, 
17 to be precise. Ladies and gentlemen, I won't say more. We have an exciting subject and an exciting speaker, Mrs. Kiru Kishore Kumar. Kiru, we wait to listen to you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. And it's a pleasure to be with you guys today. Professor Kennedy, thank you so much for that amazing introduction. It's such an honor to be with you in this platform. And Rack Hospital, thank you so much for this initiative. And Dr. Wilku and the team, thank you so much for the hard work. You know, I really wanted to start by congratulating each and every one of you who are present today. You see, the choices that we make are the hinges of our destiny. And when it comes to health, it's actually a matter of choice. The fact that you have made some time to be here today, the fact that you have registered in this challenge shows that you have taken the first step in choosing health. So I really want to congratulate you all for that and a big class of hand. So as you all know, we are going to be talking about gut health. I'm going to share my screen with you. Just bear with me for a sec. And is that all? Can, is it visible? Yes, we can see, we can see your presentation too. Thank you so much, Prof. So gut health and obesity, for the next few minutes, we're gonna be talking about that. Before I jump in, I want to encourage every one of you to share any questions in the chat if, that I will try and answer in, by, by the end of this uh, talk. And if you find anything that I say resonates with you, just give me a thumbs up. You can wave your hand or just put it in the comment. In that way, it's just not going to be a monologue, but it's going to be a dialogue. So gut health and obesity. What are we going to talk about? The next few minutes, we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you a little bit of basic understanding what really is gut microbiome and what are the roles of these guys? Why do we even have these guys with us? And gut health and obesity, which is really important. What are the habits that you could be having right now in your lifestyle that can destroy these microbes? And lastly, I'm going to give you some science-based tools which would you can apply immediately in your life and that will strengthen your gut health. So the word gut health. So when you talk about the gut, it refers to your digestive system. That's starting from your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach, your liver, your gallbladder, your intestine, your colon, and even your rectum. So we all know what's the uh, you know, function of this, right? It helps us to break down the food, absorb all the nutrients, and flush off the waste. Why is it important? The main reason I'm here to, to talk about is a particular important um, organ, which is called microbiome. For those of you who doesn't know what microbiome is, everything that lives with us in this digestive tract, the fungi, the cells, the viruses, the bacteria, and even their genetic materials. As Prof said, we have trillions of bacteria living with us. They are in our mouth, they are in our nostrils, they are on our skin, within our teeth, and even in our genitalia. And they, in our large intestine, the highest population of these guys are present. And there are more than 10 times number of microbial cells in our gut than entire human body. And roughly, there are about 100 trillion microbes. And we have more than 5,000 varieties of them. So it's, if you really look at it, it's like there are, the whole weight of this microbiome is about two kilograms, nearly the weight of your brain. 
we are carrying this two kilogram ecosystem with us. And microbiome, th these microbes contain about 7 million genes that generate molecules in order to communicate with us. So what is really gut health? It refers to a balanced ecosystem of this entire microbes. And how do we even get these guys, first of all? You know, it starts from the first time you come out from your mama's womb through her birth canal. And when you start getting fed with breast milk and new evidence suggests that, you know, babies may come in contact with these microbes, especially from the mother when they're in the womb. So it looks like this. So in the beginning of our life, we have less diversity and it grows, uh, it increases as we um, grow. And then as we age, it's going to decline. And these microbes can be influenced by several things. First of all, the food that we eat, the environment we live in, our daily habits. Are you eating, are you exercising, are you sleeping well? And of course our genes and our mother's microbes, microbes from the members of your household. This is interesting, well, I'll talk to you about that. And lastly, your state of mind. Are you stressed? Are you thinking negative thoughts? Are you emotional? All these are going to affect your microbes. Now that we know that they are there, let's look at the role. Why are we bothered about this, guys? Why should we care? First, biggest and general understanding is they, they, are, they are there to help us with a digestion. They are there to break down certain foods that our body cannot digest, especially fiber, into short chain fatty acids, which are really important for our gut health. And they influence energy metabolism. They regulate blood sugar, they influence your appetite, and even the fat storage. And this is how they're going to influence your weight loss. They are involved in detoxifying and processing all these toxins that could come into our gut from, from the food. And they, of course, control our immune system. This is really important because what's going to happen is your gut is like the first line defense to protect you from any pathogens that enter into the system. I like to think of it this in this way. Think about your entire immune system, like your defense ministry. And all these immune cells, the helper cells, the T cells, fighter cells, all these, all these macrophages are like the army who are loaded with missiles and tank. And your good set of bacteria is like a general who leads this army. So think about it. If you don't have a good general, you're not going to have a good immune system to protect you. So that's how it's important to have a good bacteria for immune system. And also it promotes different hormones, like nearly 20 different varieties of hormones um, it's going to be influencing and it controls brain health. Again, it's very important. We will look to talk about it a little bit more as well. So what's going to happen is they control your brain as, as well. So basically, it's a, there's a great network happening. It's, it's enriched with uh, a, like special nerve system, like enteric nervous system. And there it's, we even call our gut the second brain. There's a great communication happening 24-7. Even when you're sleeping, the communication is happening. So let, if you think about the real examples, if, when you have a very good meal, you feel full you feel happy, you feel satisfied. And when the food is not good, you may feel nauseous or discomfort. How is this happening? There's a message going from your gut to your brain. And another way around as well, when you have feelings, emotions, when you're angry, when you are sad, when you're happy, your microbes listen to these every word that you say, every thought that you have, they're gonna be listening. And most importantly, they amplify and 
keep these feelings, emotions. Let me give you a very good example. And I'm sure most of you would have come across this time. I mean, I'm sure you would have felt this in some point in your life, the butterfly feeling that you get in your gut. Everybody can relate it, right? So it's basically the butterfly feeling that you get before you go for an interview or before you meet your first date. I'm sure you all can remember that. How is that happening? It's that emotion is connected in your, with your gut microbes. So that's a very good example for us to remember. Then we can talk about serotonin. Serotonin is produced in gut and 95% is stored in your gut. Serotonin is also referred to as happy hormones. It's really crucial for sleep, to move the food around, and it's good for your appetite. They control your appetite and also to feel, have pain sensitivity and mood. And it influences your vitamins and enzymes production, like vitamin K, your microbes are important for that. And lastly, microbes influences your nutrient absorption. This is again, we are going to, I will explain to you how important it is when it comes to weight loss. So this is the whole summary of how these guys are playing a key role in our health. Now that we know that they are important, I'm going to take you through some signs that you can understand and keep in mind to realize what's really happening in this ecosystem. We must understand our body has its own intelligence and it's always, always working to protect us. And the ways that they communicate, our body communicates are through these signs. Only if we understand, only if we are paying attention to this communication, we can certainly achieve health. So let's look at the signs. First one, you are struggling to lose weight. Let's say you're trying everything under the sun. You're eating right, you're exercising, you're sleeping, you're taking care of all the habits. Still, you cannot lose weight. Then it is about time you start looking at your microbiome. It's made, most of the time it's to do with that. Fatigueness. If you are feeling tired by midday, that means there is an imbalance in your gut microbes. Gut dysbiosis, which could lead to leaky gut or gut SIBO, we call it. An imbalance between the good guys and bad guys can cause that bloatedness. I'm sure many of you can relate. You can put it in the chat if it's you. There was a time in my life I was suffering with bloatedness and for years actually, which led to food intolerance as well. So suddenly I started understanding that I, my body cannot digest gluten and dairy. And this happened in early thirties. And these are signs that your gut bacteria is in imbalance. Until I fixed it, I was not able to sort that out. And skin rashes, sudden rashes could also relate to that. And autoimmune conditions, if you have uh, thing, uh, problems, thyroid problems or type 1 diabetes, these could be uh, a condition where gut microbes can influence inflammation in general, whether it's to do with your gut inflammation or whether it's to do with your joint inflammation, science says that gut microbes can play a role. Migraine, it is very important. A lot of people have this issue and imbalance in gut microbes can also trigger. If you are struggling to fall asleep, insomnia, again, it's related to gut microbes. Cravings, wow, this is really a biggie. I'm sure you all have these kind of issues, and I did. Basically, cravings are due to a mix of gut bacteria. I'm going to give you some example. If you have too much of yeast, you're going to crave for sugar. If you have too much of bacteriorides, you're going to love fat. If you have a lot of privotolo, you will love carbs. And if you have bifidobacteria, too much of them, you will love to have fiber. So if they have their own method of asking you for this kind of food, one, they're going to trigger this craving and then you, you're going to feel it. And also 
they're going to influence your dopamine neurotransmitter serotonin as well, right? The second way of asking for their favorite food is a nasty way. That's by releasing some toxins when they don't get the food that they like. And these toxins can cause discomfort. It, you can feel the bloatedness is because of that. And anxiety, guys, again, is a sign that you are having an imbalance. And of course, infl inflammatory chronic diseases like diabetes, it's also said to have a relative relations because influenced by gut microbes. I'm going to give you more explanation on that. Uh, so when it comes to cravings, next time you crave for pizza, chocolate, you can blame your gut microbes because now you know who is the culprit. These are the signs. We now know our microbes are important for us. And we know how the uh, signs that our body is giving us to like an SOS signals telling us something is wrong. For the next few slides, I'm going to be talking about the science between the weight loss and your microbes. So I'm going to give you some, bring you some science to explain how these microbes can influence when it comes to weight loss. Here's a, the, one of the famous studies and um, there are a few studies come, which had been released. What has happened is they have identified different types of microbes in an obese person to a lean person. So there was a study released in 2009 from Washington University. What they did was they took identical human twins, like they took about four sets of twins and each group had lean person and an obese person. And they took these microbes and introduced into mice, which had been bred in a germ-free zone. So when they inserted the microbes from a lean person, the mice remained slim. And when they inserted the microbes from an obese person, the mice started gaining weight. How cool is that? And then now they wanted to find out, okay, what will it happen if we put these guys in the same cage? Can they try exchange these microbes? So they, they were expecting that these mice would eat each other's feces and they can exchange these microbes. So what they did was they placed these mice with the lean microbes with, in the same cage as the mice with the obese before these mice started gaining weight. And they found that these mice, although they have these obese microbes in them, they did not gain weight. So that means my, they, these guys are exchanging microbes. And lastly, now they wanted to find out, can the food influence these uh, microbes? And they were trying to imitate human food. So what they did was they fed these mice with food which are high in fiber and low in fat. And they found that these obese mice did not gain weight, they remain lean. But the moment they increase the bad fat and reduce the fiber, the obese mice, that is mice which had the obese microbes started gaining weight. With the whole, with the whole picture of this and the studies are that an obese person have different set of microbes compared to a lean person. And of course, in animals, at least in animal studies, it had been shown that this can be exchanged. And of the main point here, the food that we eat is going to influence these guys. The next study, they went into the details to find out, is there a particular gut microbe that is influencing these, this weight loss? So there was a study which came up indicating uh, talking about these names of these microbes. If you have too much of firmicutes than bacteroides, then the chances are you're going to be obese. So if you have 60% firmicutes and 40% bacteroides, this ratio will set you up for weight gain. Guys, think about it. You're trying to lose weight. You're doing everything right, but you just can't lose weight. Maybe you have this ratio messed up. So 
what's going to happen is the more firmicutes than bacteroides, they are going to the food that you eat, they're going to the calories are going to be stored as fat. And if you take a person with an imbalanced ratio of these two bacteria, feed them with a big bowl of pasta, the calories are going to be stored as fat. And if you take a person with a balanced ratio of these two bacteria and feed them with the same bowl of pasta, they will not gain weight. This could be why you may have seen people, they might be eating anything, all the junk food and too many calories, but they never gain weight. And there might be people, you just give them a small piece of carrot, they tend to gain weight. And this is because of this ratio being messed up. Third point, the science now also says, now we need, we have all these varieties and so on, but we need to have a diversity of these guys. Remember, we have nearly more than 5,000 varieties. So studies have found obese people seem to have a small diversity compared to a healthy individual. And also the science now says the microbes can influence how human is absorbing the nutrients from the food that we eat. So no matter how good quality food you eat, if you don't have the right set of pets in your gut, you're not going to be able to absorb those nutrients. It's going to be a waste. And of course, when you have low bacteroides, they are going to mess up your glucose, blood sugar, glucose level, and the BMI is going to be high. This is what they have seen in the science. And microbiome is going to influence your metabolism. Now, this is very important, guys, because metabolism is the biggest factor when we, have, when we are focusing on weight loss. So researchers from the University of McMaster in Canada what they found, the metabolism signaling to cells in the gut, microbiome, some microbes are worsening this metabolism by producing more serotonin. And when the serotonin is high, it increases your blood sugar and it causes to you to have metabolic problems. So the wrap up of that, what we science is, yes, of course, gut health could be the secret that you've been looking for, for weight loss. Obesity is associated with phylum level of changes in the microbes. It re reduced bacterial diversity will certainly mess up um, uh, your chances of losing weight. Altered bacterial genes is going to be influencing as well as altered metabolic pathways. So that means we not only need right proportions of bacteria, we need a variety of them to lose weight. Now that we know all these things, let's look at some habits that you may be doing right now is disturbing these microbes. The first one would be overuse of antibiotics. When we take a dose of antibiotic. It's, we are not only killing the bad bacteria, but we are also killing the good bacteria. It reduces the diversity, especially when it comes to those permicutes bacteroides ratio. And also it affects your blood sugar level. It causes leaky gut. So when it is, it is said, after a dose of antibiotic, you can get these good bacteria back on track at least within a month but there might be chances that the number of these bacteria could be less than the ones you had before the course of antibiotics. So listen, guys, I am not saying you should never take antibiotics. What we need to understand is as soon as we finish a course, are we going to take the relevant actions to make sure that we get these guys back? And here's the thing, when it comes to antibiotics, we not only we are talking about the medications, we also get antibiotics from the uh, meat that we eat today. The dairy, the milk that we drink, these are exposed to antibiotics as well. The second thing that disrupts your gut pets is your Western diet. We'll talk about it. I'll give you more details about the food, but these are your bad fats 
the refined carbs and sugar, the toxic processed food, they will destroy your gut. Studies say a Western diet may shift the composition of your good bacteria within 24 hours. So that's how it is bad when it comes to food. And then lack of physical activity. If you're someone who is always seated in front of the computer and not moving enough, that's, that's going to affect your gut back bacteria as well. Exercise, promote the growth, growth of good bacteria that produces fatty acids, which mainly butyrate. Butyrate can promote to repair your gut lining, inflammation, and it prevents inflammatory bowel diseases as well. And of course, diabetes as well. Birth control is another um, culprit which will destroy your good bacteria and pesticides on your food, as well as the toxins in your environment. What are you spraying as air fresheners? What are you using to wash your dishes? These uh, forms and even what you're drinking, the bottled water that comes in plastics, these are ways the toxins can leach into your system. Smoking and overconsumption of alcohol will disrupt. Exposure to pathogens, that means if you're if you're got if you have got virus, some virus can mess up your gut bacteria as well. Toxic cosmetics. Ladies, this is really important. And even for men, the deodorants that we spray today, and even the, what's the cream that you're applying? You know, we must understand we have bacteria on our skin. And when we apply these kind of toxic creams, it destroys the bacteria on the skin. And there's a great network between the gut bacteria and the skin bacteria as well. Overuse of hand sanitizers. Now, this is very common over the last two years. We were trying to, um, you know, destroy all the baddies in our hands. But at the same time, some of the good bacteria could have got uh, destroyed as well. Toothpaste. There are commercial toothpaste have toxic ingredients and this can mess up your bacteria in your mouth. And lastly, stress. We know how the connection is, right? And there are so many um, examples of studies that have been done uh, talking about how stress can influence. And also when it comes to sleep, I want to give you another example that I just remembered about the studies. Uh, we must understand we have a 24 hour um, internal clock, which we call the circadian rhythm. And there was a study done to see two days of sleep deprivation can reduce the good bacteria. And this can had seen shown to increase your weight as also associated with obesity and type two diabetes, especially your fat metabolism. And when it comes to stress, there was a study done in a group of um, students. There, were, there are enough studies done in even in animals as well, where they found the mice, uh, when they are exposed to heat stress or isolation, it's affecting the gut bacteria. And especially with humans, th this study showed when they found these uh, 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 students who are preparing for exam during the semester of their exam, because of the exam stress, they had lost some good bacteria. So this is how a simple stress can influence our bacteria. Now that we know, okay, what are our habits, I'm going to give you the tips and tools that you, you have been waiting for. First, biggest one is the food, as I said before. So let's look at the food. Avoid refined carbs, avoid refined sugar. So these are your bakery goodies, the pasta, the bread, the desserts, your added sugar, carbonated drinks, artificial sweeteners, energy bars. And when we look at the bad fats, these are your commercial oils like the sunflower oil, canola oil. These are like the trans fat, like margarine and processed food, toxic food, antibiotic induced meats, I told you before, pesticide sprayed uh, veggies, canned food and chips, which I normally call the crap. C for carbonated drinks, R for refined sugar, A for artificial foods, P for processed food. Stop eating that if you can. This is one of the biggest culprit. Second step, 
we now need to make sure that we are feeding all these dire guys. We have, I told you we have more than 5,000, right? We need to be respond, responsible to feed these guys. So increase your plant diversity to bring in new vegetables, bring in seeds, herbs, greens, nuts. So one of the key studies demonstrated that people who ate at least 30 different types of food in a week had more diverse gut microbes than people who ate just 10. So are you eating enough greens and veggies within a week? Here's a tip. When, if you are eating only a handful of greens and veggies, and if you're like eating lettuce salad all the time, remember you're starving to death, some of the good guys. So now the task is think about making a big bowl of salad. So this is something that I normally share with my clients when they say, oh, this is challenging. How do I eat 15 varieties in a day? It's simple. You just have to make a big bowl of salad with all your meals and then just put throw in all the greens and veggies and go for a challenge to try veggies and um, even like root, plant, like root veggies, whatever you haven't tried before, try to go and taste those. In that way, you can certainly cover up to the 50 different types by end of, end of 30 days. So that's one tip for you to increase the diversity of the greens and veggies. Third step is to think about bringing in the three Ps, which I call, which is probiotic food, prebiotic food, and polyphenol food. Probiotic food are different types of fermented food. Why do we need to do that? Is because in different type of fermentation, we are going to have different strains of bacteria and microbes. And it's really important that we bring these guys back into our system, right? So probiotic food would be sauerkraut, kimchi, pickled vegetables, low sugar kombucha, and pre probiotic rich yogurt, make sure that it, it doesn't have any added sugar in it, and raw kefir. These are really good source. Ideally, you should be having at least one cup every day and try to mix this uh, range. And then now that you brought these guys in, you need to make sure that you're feeding them. So you go for the prebiotic food, the greens, the beans, the seeds, banana, berries, asparagus, garlic, onion, leeks, all these are rich in prebiotic food. And lastly, polyphenols. These are antioxidant rich food, olives, fennel, organic mold free coffee, artichokes, celery, raw cocoa, nuts, variety of nuts. Always make sure that you're eating a handful of nuts every day. And lastly, non synthetic red wine, and in a moderate level, dry farm wine, with, without any synthetic is known to help your gut bacteria according to the studies as well. So when you have these guys in the right proportion, they're going to help you to suppress your hunger, manage your appetite, and your insulin sensitivity will be improved. The fourth tool is fasting. This is one of my favorite. Um, I lead a fasting lifestyle and fasting is an ancient tool. Of course, it's free, guys. It's not something new. I'm sure every one of you would have experienced the uh, goodness of fasting in some point due to religious fasting or anything that you have done in before. So we must understand at different hours, we are going to turn on different benefits. It's like you're switching on different benefits. Of so when it comes to gut health, according to the studies, there's numerous studies giving this information. 24-hour fast is a great way if you want to reboot your gut. So when you go out of food for 24 hours, your intestinal stem cells are going to become produced more. And they go into the mucosal layer in your uh, mucosal cells and the linings, and they're going to repair your gut. They're going to bring in new bacteria into your gut. So this is really important for somebody who had gone uh, on a, uh, you know, if you have taken some antibiotics, or if you feel you having issues like the signs that I mentioned, you can consider 24 hours. The second option is an alternate day fast. And studies say that means you're fasting uh, for one day and you're not fasting, you're eating in whatever you like, of course, to like healthy options. 
you're not fasting for. When you do alternate day fast, they have found that the diversity between this permacutes uh, bacteroidids ratio ha has also flipped and the diversity had increased. And lastly, five day water fast. It's quite a good um, option uh, in order to heal yourself as well as to change the entire microbiome. And here's the thing, studies have found when people did a five day fast before they did the change in their uh, diet, the diet, were, they were able to cope up with the diet much better and benefit more. So with fasting, I want to remind you guys with something. If you are new to fasting, my submission to you, please don't jump into a longer fast immediately. It's, you need to gradually build this stamina. It's exactly like how you will be working out. So start by pushing your breakfast by, by one hour and gradually increase that interval. In, it's like how you will be building your muscle. You got to build your fasting muscles. In, or try to do this with the supervision of a health expert in such a way so you know you're on the right track, yeah? Next step include diet variation. This is another important point. Again, I have come across so many clients doing that. What happens is when we want to lose weight, we change our diet and there's so many diets uh, out there. Ketogenic diets is most spoken about these days. And I want to bring this as an example. But the moment you shift to keto, ketogenic diet, you feel you start losing weight and you get really excited about this. So what you tend to do is you keep on being in the same diet for months and months. What happens is you get to a plateau, then you cannot shift your weight at all. So this is because you're not feeding certain bacteria. So you've got to be varying, varying your diet. So go some days go on to ketogenic diet, do low keto. Carnivore, if it, there's so many studies coming up saying carnivore is good. So somebody who cannot shift that, if you feel you're stuck, then throw in some carnivores days, you will see amazing results and make time for good quality sleep. I spoke about the sleep briefly as well. I'm sure it has been touched before in the webinars. So try to have a structured sleep routine so that you don't you know, mess up the gut bacteria. Here's another tip I would suggest. Say if you have slept very late and then you try to catch up uh, those hours by sleeping in late, right, you know, not waking up uh, on time in the morning, that will mess up not only your circadian rhythm, because we must understand the neurotransmitters, which is melatonin and serotonin, these are connected with sunrise and sundown. So once you mess that up, you're not going to be able to lose weight. So the tip for you is if you had missed some hours first day, wake up on the same time, and try to go to bed early the next day. In that way, you don't mess up your routine. Reduce stress. Exercise we spoke about in the previous webinars. Yoga we spoke about last week. So meditation and deep uh, breathing exercise is amazing. If you want to improve uh, and come out of stress, probiotics. This is very important. I'm sure uh, many of you may have come across this, but I want to add some point here. Taking probiotics supplements are good. It's like you're bringing in new pets, but your responsibility should be, you need to make sure you're feeding them with a variety. I like to look at it like weeding a garden and then replanting it. So when you take probiotic without killing the baddies, what's going to happen is like you're going and planting beautiful flower pl plants with the weeds. Obviously the weeds are not going to allow the plants to grow, right? So be careful on that. Lastly, get your hands dirty. It's very simple. Those days, you know, we grew up being allowed to go and play in the garden, mud. We were allowed to touch the soil. But these days, kids are not getting that exposure. I strongly encourage you to do that. Even if you're an adult, that's fine. Try and touch the soil. So this is something that I do when I go for running um, on a weekly basis, I make sure that I'm, I take off the shoes and I just walk 
as, as a wound down or just to make sure that my I'm touching the grass and also I touch the soil frequently because there's a particular bacteria called bacche, mycobacterium bacche, which from the soil, it's going to help us as well. So this is very important to get your hands dirty. When, when you do all these things, you can certainly, certainly bring back these good guys. So I really wanted to say health gut, healthy gut is going to leave you with a healthy you. So a couple of you, um, reminders before I wind up. Remember, guys, we all were born with miraculous healing powers, and our body has its own beautiful intelligence that's way beyond our imaginations. And this intelligence knows how to lose weight. All what we need to do it is to support this body. We, we now know that microbiome plays a key role in weight loss. So what's our responsibility? Make sure you bring these gut bacteria back. Make sure you're feeding them, you're nurturing them and having a healthy, balanced relationship. With that relationship, you're going to be able to have weight loss, lose that weight. You're going to be able to strengthen your immune system. You're going to be happy and healthy. So that's kind of my wrap up and brings you to the last slide. Thank you so much for being with me today and this opportunity. I hope I have been shared some useful tips and tools with you. If you do have any questions, feel free to connect with me anytime. I would love to help you. And we wrap up with that. Thank you so much. I'm just going to stop my sharing. Thank you, Kiru. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You gave us a lot of information and much of that information was unique. You spoke about the gut microbiome and its influence on the mind, on the brain. Uh, you said that the food we eat impacts our state of mind. There's a correlation between microbes and the brain from both ways and you spoke about stress and anxiety. Uh, you also spoke about important aspects, aspects or regular aspects of the gut microbiome impacting in a positive way, blood sugar and immunity. And then of course, you gave us several tips on how we could improve our gut microbiome. And these tips all reinforced what we learn uh, in more traditional aspects of nutrition. Uh, you said almost exactly the same things. Avoid commercial foods, improve the diversity of your plant foods. You spoke about probiotics and prebiotics. You spoke about fasting. And then the great joy of having different specialists talk on a similar subject, which brings diversity to the entire spectrum. You actually spoke about the utilization of modern diets such as keto and even the vegan diet and how we could correlate these things. Now, as a speaker in nutrition, I never knew the answer to that. And I have to thank you, Kito, uh, 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 Kiru. The integration or the diversity of utilizing these diverse diets, uh, which our clients are going to follow anyway because it's on TV, but use it to advantage. That is the great joy of diversity. I want to thank you very much, Kiru. Thank you so much. That was, that was enlightening. And as I always say, at my age, if I can learn one new thing, I've had a great day. Thank you so much. Dr. Wilku, it's all yours, sir. Questions and answers. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, first of all, thank you, Kiru, uh, for a wonderful session. Really, you have enlightened many things uh, which we 
were either you can say not knowing it or maybe neglecting it so there are very interesting questions and uh, i would uh, thank you very much uh, for the points you have raised and i am seeing many questions are coming in uh, interesting questions are coming so first question paramprit is asking how does gut microbiome so called the gut flora impact obesity yeah so um so basically how i explained when when if you have one of those habits we spoke about so many habits right so if you have one of those habits there are chances that you could have messed up the balance of these gut microbes so especially we know now the science says if you're obese if you had been obese for a while obviously there's going to be an imbalance so the best way i would say is there are um, ways and means now we can do a gut test to identify which kind of bacteria what kind of proportions we have there's something called gut zoma as well um, where you can do this test and figure out where do you, where you stand and in general in general every one of us are exposed to toxins we don't have a choice these days i mean do we do but the choices are limited so the food that we eat i mean we cannot be eating if i mean if we can eat all organic that's best but we can't manage it so to some extent we are damaging these guys so the good practice would be when it comes to obesity is to try to to go for a reset like try and uh, accommodate some of these tools that i mentioned of course it's free of charge just try and bring it as a practice and uh, then the second stage would be to approach a um, professional to run a gut zoma test and figure out what's there and then go into a course of um, rebuilding this whole ecosystem again that would be my advice yeah thank you uh, there are two connected questions i would take uh, together uh, again paramprit is asking is probiotic available commercially is helpful for improving gut health and similar question uh, mr sadhya kumar is also asking how to balance a microbiome i think you can club these together and answer it yeah so probiotics yes we have enough of probiotics and you get it in two forms one are live bacteria and one you get it the dry versions of well, as well so here is my um, submission to you first if you are going for probiotic it's good because it's like taking a supplement to additional help but one problem here is you need to choose something that is giving you a variety of strains that's key because no point in you taking a small strains only second as i said in my explanation if you are having a bad mix there's no point you are taking this probiotic with this baddies you're going to have a long time to rebuild and we must understand it's a process it's not like a press of a button because these bacteria had been destroyed and messed up for a period of time in our lifestyle right so we cannot expect magic overnight and my suggestion is take probiotics for a limited time and then while doing that make sure you're doing all other uh, tools as well using making sure that you're eating the right food which is very important and also you're making sure that you're um, having the varieties of greens and veggies to feed these guys because you're introducing some pets what happens if you are not feeding them they're going to die so that's my answer and the second one is how do we build this microbiome back yes of course as i said probiotic is good but try to incorporate at least two three steps that i shared with you in the end of the uh, talk especially even if you can't bring in everything just start by getting rid of those baddies the food this is the biggest culprit so if you can omit all the bads and then start slowly building a culture of eating more greens and veggies as i said 
for fun, just go and start tasting different uh, veggies. Like we, we started doing that as well, especially with my husband. Like he doesn't eat all the herbs. that So he, we will just bring in these and it doesn't sometimes taste good. But I just make sure that he's eating because it's, it's healthy. So it's fun. So uh, I used to do challenge among us as well, among my clients for, for a week to get them to go and eat all these things. We, I found some uh, purple potatoes the other day. I was curious to eat it. I mean, just bring that in because your guy, your pets are going to be happy for that. So these are the simple uh, tools I would suggest. Yeah, the wonderful word, the pets we have. Yeah, the same signs and symptoms you were mentioning, uh, I would rather on a lighter note, I would uh, say it's a gut feeling thing type of thing, gut feeling what we say. Okay, uh, Mr. Harsahit Singh is asking, it's an interesting question because I was going through the science also. So my mother has ulcerative colitis and has IBS also. And what is the best probiotic she can have, either a natural or whatever you suggest? Okay, um, IBS is again to do with your uh, large intestine. And of course, it's an imbalance for sure. So probiotic wise, I am an integrative uh, nutritionist and I'm always a fan of natural stuff but here's the thing I am not keen in prescribing a like a one pill solution so my suggestion to you for your mom is try and get her to follow these all these natural ways plus if you have a like a GP you can ask seek advice to recommend a particular brand depending on where you are so we have a lot of options in uh, uae and i i recommend something that i tr tried not that i have any uh, uh, you know uh, connection with any brands but it's just that what i tried and i know the source is good so as i said just seek some advice from the experts and then if for you, for you, for your information, if you want to take some probiotic, try to do it for about 90 days and then give a break. And then while doing, and then go try to bring in all this, while doing that, bring in all these natural practices as well. That's my recommendation. Right. So I would add to that point because every individual is uh, special in Absolutely. itself. Until unless you consult the doctor uh, and doctor will... Uh, just assess your problem and then according to that, uh, the probiotics will be uh, suggested. Now, there is one interesting question. Even I was thinking about this. Uh, Mr. Hasaj Singh is asking, you mentioned about avoiding a sunflower oil. The natural sunflower oil has PUFA and MUFA and it is loaded with omega-3 also. It is considered a, a good uh, for health and you have suggested to avoid it. So what I meant here was commercial uh, uh, oils. So sunflower oil, which is rich in omega-6 and trans fat, which is like synthetic versions. But sunflower seed oils, you can find some sunflower seed oils, which are certainly rich in omega-3. And this is actually coming through cold press, manual pressings and so on. There are some brands. And if you can get hold of those, that's fine. But whatever you find in the supermarket, the refined ones, and like, you know, they call it, or oh, you don't have flavors and everything. It has gone through a process, synthetic process. These are known to be rich in omega-6. But sunflower seed is certainly different. I, I hope, I think that's what you, you were referring to. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, again, I will add to this point because many of the time when we are doing consultations, so we always uh, tell uh, people to uh, when you are buying an oil, you should be very careful. People used to say, I uh, buy sunflower oil. Now, in, if you see uh, where we are living, so picture is sunflower oil. If you see on the behind the ingredients, it's a palm oil and something, some synthetic oil. So you have to be very careful uh, before you are going to purchase it. Okay, so there was one question you have already answered. Bharat Rathore is asking, how exactly the gut microbiome help to reduce obesity? You have already answered it. Yeah. So you, uh, yeah. 
So, so can you uh, give because uh, there are two uh, two or three breakup questions also. How we are going to improve naturally uh, the probiotics that we have or the microbials we have, the gut flora. Naturally, how can we increase it? So naturally, other ways by um, following the steps I shared with you. One, be patient, be kind to yourself. These are the two. Don't expect overnight uh, changes when you start to rebuild health. But then the basic things avoid what we are talking about, which we call the bad food, and then eat the good food. Try to avoid, um, if you can, go for organic food. I mean, in uh, Dubai, we have ripe far farmer's market. And if you can fetch some veggies, um, you can do that. And there are certain veggies which have more toxins compared to certain veggies. So if you can choose at least in that mix, that will be good. And try to avoid synthetic creams, like especially that's something that I'm practicing. I don't. Uh, I've stopped a few years back all the expensive creams and I'm now may making use of natural aroma oils. And this is like going back to the basics. So these are good habits. And if, if at all, um, you look at your sleeping patterns, please make sure you're moving well, make some, have some movie, uh, uh, exercise incorporated into your practice. So this is everything. It's like, there's no one tool. My way of doing health is you have to do a holistic way, a full package, each and everything. And lastly, if you can get into some sort of fasting practices, uh, like I said, I mean, you can go and do your research as well. Fasting is amazing. It is the quickest way how I have been able to help. I actually been teaching people on that as sorry well. To sorry to interrupt, uh, Kiru. Again, there is the, there are two questions uh, which you are saying. So you are, you are mentioning about that. So I will take that question also together. Uh, Muhammad Adnan, as well as uh, Eliza, is asking about the fasting you have, you mentioned about. You mentioned about five days of fast uh, water fasting. Is it monthly, annually, or uh, how uh, frequently uh, you can do this? And what is the good fluid you can have? Got what? Sorry, what was that? What fluid. fluid? Uh, miss, uh, what are the kind of fluid you can take? During fasting. Okay. So when I said, gave you examples of these 24 hours alternate day fast and five days, uh, if the question is like, are you referring to what kind of fluids you can e take during the fasting window? My preference is just keep it simple, stick to water or black tea or black coffee in a moderate level. Now, here's the thing, throwing in a five day water fast is kind of an extreme option. So if you have not been practicing it, I don't recommend that. And five day water fast is kind of a therapeutic way. So for example, somebody who, who is considering 72 hours water fast, that's three day water fast, we kind of uh, uh, you know, practice that especially if you want to, if you're coming out of chemo, or if you want to really heal yourself from uh, muscular skeletal injuries, it's awesome. But my submission, please do it with someone who can guide you, not on your own. So in my um, you know, um, tribe, this is what we do. There should be somebody because we need to be responsible as well as we need to make sure that your blood sugar is uh, in the right zone and you need to make sure you're doing it right. And especially, especially if you are someone who is on medication, don't jump into fasting without consulting your doctor. You need to make sure that he or she is aware and there's a support coming from that side because it's not an alternate for any medicine. It's kind of another lifestyle, but of course, as uh, Dr. Wilku said, bio-individuality counts. Everybody, one of us are unique and you need to do it in such a way that suits you best. Yeah, thank you. I would take a very interesting question and it's an experience uh, Aisha is having. She has lost uh, 25 kilos during this uh, period challenge. That's wow. very good, fantastic. Now she has started craving for chocolate. So she's asking how to control my crave. I feel Aisha, to eat chocolate. 
<laughs> Congratulations, Aisha, for that. It's amazing that you lost. Okay, now you know craving is not you. It could be also because of these guys inside your gut asking and creating this uh, thought. So don't blame yourself. So it, all what you need to do, I told you, chocolates. So uh, if you're craving for chocolates and all these things, more likely you could have Firmicutes or any imbalance. I'm, I mean, Firmicutes is one example. I told you we have 5,000. So the only way to be precise is to do a test. But in general, just try to practice some of these habits, what I'm telling you. And also cravings, to add to it from the nutrition uh, integrative power side, um, are you drinking enough water? Cravings, sometimes we misinterpret cravings for thirsty as well. This is a very common thing we find when people go on weight loss. So you can do that. And also, uh, yes, Mina, uh, I drink water, but uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, I shall. I drink uh, water, but sometimes I drink more juice. Mm hmm. What kind of juice are you drinking? Yes, and uh, about the chocolate, uh, uh, orange juice or pineapple juice, uh, also something like lemons and mints like this. Yeah, so I mean, um, juices are good provided it's coming from natural fruits and you're making by yourself instead of going and buying stored foods. Yes, stored. without sugar, without sugar. Yeah. Eating sugar. So the biggest uh, concern here would be, I would suggest, why don't you try incorporating the three Ps, probiotic food, polyphenol food, and prebiotic foods. So these ones would be quite beneficial uh, to bring in these kind of, um, uh, you know, especially if you want to suppress your cravings. Consciously yeah, start uh, bringing in some good bacteria. Yeah, thank you, Kuru. Uh, I think we have covered almost uh, all the queries. If anyone has any other queries, uh, please uh, write a mail and support at uh, Rack Weight Loss Challenge. Definitely we'll be answering and supporting that. Uh, we have almost covered, not almost, we have covered all the questions what we have uh, been received in a mail also and chat also. Uh, in last uh, query from my side, what is your takeaway message? My takeaway message is weight loss will not be a struggle if you know how your system works. All you need to do is, first of all, are you kind to yourself and are you being in a good relationship? Uh, be able to communicate, understand what your body needs and don't compare and don't try to compete with anyone. Every one of us have our own journey. And, and when it comes to gut microbes, please take care of your pets. I love to call them pets because in that way, we don't feel we are taking care of bacteria and virus, which we don't normally like. So please take care of them. I guarantee you will have a healthy journey. Yeah, you should be... Uh listening to your gut feelings also, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so professor, over to you. Uh, Ma'am, uh, ma we cannot interact uh, in this. You can ask the query in uh, support mail. We will definitely reply you. Professor, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kiro. I love the answer to several questions. I especially we liked your answer about sunflower oil. The variance between commercially available sunflower oil and the sunflower seed oil. I liked your answer over there. I was also delighted with the fact that you were kind enough to suggest that uh, in case you were to go on for fasting, especially if you were on medication, that you must always take your doctor's advice. That is good. Uh, a friend messaged me while you were speaking and said, ask the question on behalf of the larger male fraternity. While you have said that wine 
is a probiotic natural red wine. The gentleman asks, is alcohol in moderation going to destroy my gut microbiome? I would request you to be very kind in your answer, but nevertheless, give us the facts as you know them. Kiru. Yes, yes. It's, uh, this is actually the second time I'm getting the same question from, um, from the last webinar as well regarding alcohol. So basically, um, when you look at alcohol in general, the beer, whiskey, and so on, what's going to happen? These are produced with synthetics agents. And these are rich, that's going, that means coming with toxins. And because of that, of course, it's not going to give you the same benefit as a dry farm, uh, organic, non-synthetic red wine. And also the sugar contents, but especially uh, if we are drinking quite frequently, of course, the sugar can, content is high. So your glycemic index is going to fluctuate as well. And if we are told you're concerned about weight loss, this is something that you need to be keep taking care of. When it comes to wine, I, I'm, I mean, I suggest, I always say people who are living in other parts of the world, like Canada and Australia, you have more options to dry farm wines. Of course, we have few in UAE as well. Even among wine, red wine seems to be uh, better than white wine. White wine seems to have a higher sugar content and also the polyphenols. We, we have superpower polyphenols as well among polyphenols. I just gave you the general ones. So these polyphenols depends on where these grapes are coming from and the, the, the temperature of the, uh, you know, the environment where these, uh, you know, vineyards are. And all these counts as well, especially sulfates. This is very bad. Sulfates is known to be destroying and causing a lot of issues for us as well. Moderate level, even for red wine, my uh, submission is moderate level. So I hope I have answered the question. As always, you were so kind. Thank you so much. Uh, friends, that was an exciting session. The topic excited me right from the beginning. Uh, the speaker was brilliant, I'm sure, as always. I'd like to thank Kiru for that lovely presentation. I would like to thank our audience who came in hordes to listen to this exciting uh, webinar. Uh, we couldn't do this without the support of the team, Dr. Wilku, Sadeh, uh, Safraz, the IT team, the RAC Hospital organization uh, in general. And now right on your screen is our next webinar, which is next week. And that webinar is on childhood obesity. Uh, two or three distressing things that we've learned in recent years about our children is one, that childhood obesity uh, can reach up to about 50% in, uh, in developed countries. And that is a large number. And secondly, that the prediction is that our children will probably not live as long in terms of years as the earlier generation. We must change that. And therefore we have an eminent speaker, a pediatrician who will be talking about childhood obesity. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I take your leave and I leave you also to enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much and good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kiru. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.